Hi, this is Mike of 71 Squared and welcome to the second tutorial on writing a game in OpenGL on the iPhone. So at the end of the uh, first tutorial we had covered creating our basic project. So we were actually able to um, print a sprite or an image onto the screen using OpenGL. Uh, and we'd used a couple of things to do that. We'd uh, taken the standard template um, OpenGL application template in Xcode and we'd made some changes to it so we could use that and we'd also imported the Texture 2D class that Apple had created uh, or used within their crash landing example uh, and we used that. Now going on what we want to do is we want to actually do more um, than just print something to the screen otherwise our game's going to be pretty boring. So what I decided to do was while Texture 2D was a, a cool class it did what we needed it was able to take uh, any image that we handed it and turn it into an OpenGL texture dealing with all those things like the power of two sizes and stuff like that. Um, it's really not flexible enough for what I want to do in my game. I want to have simpler, easier methods to be able to use to um, rotate images, scale images, maybe apply a color filter, those sorts of things. And also be able to get sub-images. So maybe I've got a large texture but I only want to draw an image which uses a small part of that texture so getting a sub image so they're, they're things that I'm going to probably need to be able to do in my game so what I've decided to do is to actually create a class of my own which will do that for me so we will still use texture 2d in the background as the the image loading class if you like so that's what we'll use to load an image and turn it into a texture but when it comes to actually rendering that texture and storing information about a texture uh, on the screen we'll use a new class called image. Now the other thing I wanted to do was to obviously I've been writing some of these classes in the background um, just so that I can see how they're going to fit together for when I come and do my tutorials. So I wanted to give you an example of where we are and the kind of things that we're going to be able to do once we finish the tutorials that we're working through at the moment. So I'm just going to run the simulator now um, and this is going to show you a small test application that I've got running that is demonstrating some of the things that uh, we're going to be creating. So what we can see here is that I've got my image that we actually displayed at the end of tutorial one in the middle here but I've also now got the ability to be able to scale and rotate it so I've got the same image below but I've scaled it to two times normal size. I've also rotated it through 180 degrees uh, and I've applied a color filter to it. So you can see the color has changed from the original um, and I've also made it slightly transparent. So these are all things that we want to be able to do through the image class and this is an example of that. Once you can do those sorts of things you can then start to do animation which I've got up here with these two. Um, so this is just showing a very simple animation being run through um, of a rotating disc. And over here we've got an animation playing, but at the same time as just rendering the animation, I'm actually rotating the animation as well. So this, this little guy here rotating around, that's not part of the animation. That's me actually rotating the image as I'm actually animating as well. So these are things that we need to be able to do. So once we've built our image class, we'll then be looking at building a sprite sheet class um, to be able to handle uh, access to different images within a sprite sheet or a texture atlas as some people call them um, and also then we'll be looking at animation so that we can actually start to animate them and put lots of images together in like a flipbook type approach which is what we're doing here and then lastly um, the latest class that I've worked on is one around text so you'll see here that the uh, scrolling message at the bottom of the screen um, going past and also this time at the top of the screen it's not using fonts that are available on the iPhone uh, what this is doing is actually using bitmap font. So I've got an image that represents every letter and number and um, uh, value or character, if you like, that you can use. And you can then render a string to the screen and you can use one of the fonts that you've created and there's tools around that. And that's something we'll cover uh, in more detail when we actually look at creating this um, bitmap font, if you like, class, which I'm using here. So these are the kind of things that we're, we're playing with and as you can see and imagine this is going to give us the basis for being able to write our game. We can move things around, we can scale them, we can um, animate them, um, we can have text on the screen in, in any sort of shape and size and style and colour that we want. So once we've got that together then we can start looking at how do we actually create a game and how can we start getting our little guy to move 
um, how can we actually start firing and so on. So I know I was going to try and cover getting to this the guy to move in this tutorial, but decided that actually I needed to finish off building out the classes to do what you're seeing on the screen now, then we can start thinking about other game mechanics like moving the character um, and actually controlling entities on the screen. So hopefully that's given you an idea of the kind of things that uh, we're going to be building up and towards at the moment. Um, so if I now actually go and load um, our image, our um, tutorial, sorry. So the other thing you'll notice is that I made a bit of a mistake in the first tutorial. Um, I went and called our project tutorial one, which was great for the first tutorial, but doesn't really make a lot of sense for tutorials two, three, four, and five, and so on. So what I've done is I've actually taken that tutorial, um, where it was at the end of the tutorial that is, and I've created a new project with a name called OGL Game. Um, this is available on the blog, so that you can actually download this and carry on and follow along with me. Um, but this is going to be the project that we actually build each tutorial into, rather than having a project called Tutorial 1. So I learned from that, and uh, this is how we're going to move forward. So if I open up my um, project here, this OGL1, Okay, so this is exactly where we have finished off uh, the tutorial, the first tutorial that we covered. Um, and if I actually run this, you'll see that all we get is our little ship in the middle of the screen. So that's where we were, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is as I run through this, there is obviously quite a lot of typing involved. And rather than actually have you sitting there watching me type, I'm gonna actually just copy um, in the pieces of code as we go through and then describe them. And I'm, we'll give that a go and we'll see how that works. Um, and that'll save me typing this in. Um, you'll still get to see the code, you'll still get to hear why I've done it and what the code is doing, but it just saves me typing it all in, um, which will hopefully speed things up and not take up too much time. So as I said, we are going to create a new class and we're gonna call this class image. So because we're gonna create a, f a number of classes, we're gonna have one covering image, one for sprite sheet, one for animation, one for my bitmap fonts, um, I'm actually going to create a group called engine. Okay, so I'm gonna have a new group and this is going to be called engine because this is really sort of the game engine. This is the fundamentals of what's required to make our game work. Within here, I am going to create a new file and this is gonna be our image class. So it's a NS object subclass and we're going to call it image. Okay, so there we go. Now, what we need to think of is what are the kind of things that we need to store to actually have our image? Um, there's a number of different properties we'll want and that are important about our image, and we need to define these things. So what I'll do is I will now paste in the code um, that defines the properties that we need here. Okay, and there we are. So if I just run through these, um, we need to be able to reference a texture. So remember I said texture 2D is going to be the underlying texture that we use. So we need to be able to reference that, and we're gonna call that texture within this particular class. We then want to know what the image width and the image height are, um, and these are the actual widths of the, the image itself. So in other words, when we've loaded something in, the image is now going to be of a particular width and a particular height. And this is going to be using this power of two, um, where we actually have if we take, for example, my um, graphic, the little ship that we've been displaying on screen, that's 47 pixels wide by 71 pixels high. So the actual image size or the texture size, which Texture 2D will have actually created for us, to accommodate 47 pixels, the next power of two figure it could use is 64. So the actual image width is 64. The 